the process. I put on uh, double gloves on my hand that I'm going to make the glove on, and I put a single glove on the other hand uh, to protect your, your hands. You know, I guess you could do it without, but the, uh, the silicone caulk irritates some people. This is the silicone caulk that is, uh, uh, smells of acetic acid, really strong vinegar. So you probably want to do, uh, make gloves someplace where there is adequate ventilation. These gloves are a really good size. They seem to fit almost everybody. Uh, there's one guy on our team whose hands are too big for them. I have pretty big hands, but they, they fit me fine. And they seem to work for most, uh, you know, medium, medium sized women uh, can get them to work pretty well. So pull everything down, your arm, like that. And whenever you're working with your glove, you always want to work back towards your hand so it pulls the glove tight, more tightly on your hand. So you just get the, uh, the caulk tube ready to go. So this is G uh, silicone one caulk and it stinks pretty badly. It's also moisture catalyzed. Moisture is the thing that makes it set. Usually it just gets humidity from the air, but we add either a water-based paint or some water to it. This makes it dry much more quickly. Uh, so you can usually take the glove off inside, say 10 minutes. start off with about a third of a tube of caulk. I, I have these plastic lids I use to mix the caulk on. Now let's call it half a tube. And it doesn't really matter what you use. The nice thing about this plastic is it the caulk just comes off when you're finished. Then to that we add um, about tablespoon of paint. Like I said, you can use water also. If you're using water, you would just use, you know, a few drops of water and that will make it set up much more quickly. A little cobalt blue here. And uh, mix it up really good. If you don't use enough paint or water, it just takes a really long time to set. If you use too much, it probably won't set real well. Uh, I haven't really had that problem, so. If you use white caulk, you end up with kind of pastel colors, so I've been using clear caulk and you end up with nice bright vivid colors. Um, anyway. so. I start by, the first thing you do is put an even coat of caulk all over the glove. And you want to work it in. The better you work it in, the more the, the cloth gets impregnated with the silicone and the more durable the glove will be. I like to have a nice coating around the wrist here because I fold back the wrist of the glove. Uh, I don't put much or any on the palm because I cut the palms of my glove uh, my gloves out. And 
and you know if you have any excess you want to kind of leave it where your uh, your your padding is going to be um, so you kind of make a make a hand you know make a hand like you were holding a stick and think about all the places you've been bashed playing underwater hockey and put a little extra on there Okay, so that's the, the first application here. Like I said, I'll, I'll put a little extra around the wrist here. And then what I do is I just fold the wrist. It has a, a ribbed cuff on it. And I just fold it back on itself and it makes a really nice uh, tight wristband that, that stays on and doesn't seem to wear out. Some people don't like it. They find it constricting or something doesn't bother me at all so and again pull pulling the glove back up your arm and then I'll just uh, cover the, the inside of the wristband with caulk so it's nice and protected and strong so there's kind of a, a layer of caulk inside the doubled glove uh, that makes a nice uh, nice wristband there okay so now I have some extra on here. I'm just going to kind of try to leave it in the spots where uh, I like the extra protection on my glove. I've gone back and forth several times with the uh, protection versus speed thing on gloves. And I, I think I'm a little more on the protection side now. Uh, you know, I thought having, it would make a difference, you know, it would make my hands faster if I had uh, less padding, but I, I don't really think that's the case, uh, you know, unless you get ridiculous in terms of, so, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm getting old too, so, anyway, just make sure that you cover all the spots on your, your glove with this first layer can always come back and put more on later and I can feel this is already starting to set up so that that hasn't even been 10 minutes here um, okay. now I think it's really important as soon as you put the, the caulk on to assume a functional position because if you keep your hand open too much when you hold your stick you're actually spending some energy to uh, keep your hand uh, curled up whereas if your glove is already in that shape you don't have to do that and it feels a lot more natural to me anyway okay so this is actually setting up pretty nicely here so I'm going to go ahead and mix up the second batch, which I use to uh, make the, the reinforcement, you know, the extra padding on the, the spots where one needs it. Uh, you can always come back to and add more later. If you, you know, if you wear a little hole in your glove, like we, we play on uh, really rough bottom pools, you can always uh, come back and add more later. You don't even have to mix it up. If you have time to let it set, you can just goober some on and let your glove sit overnight. If you have a friend, you don't have to do the glove gymnastics here. So, all right, so now I'm gonna mix some more up. Uh, also, remember uh, that uh, red and orange and sometimes yellow are the color of Japanese gloves and are specifically forbidden. Um, okay, so, so I, I would guess it uses, you know, three quarters of a tube of caulk to make a glove. Uh, well, this looks like almost a whole tube here. 
some paint. The glove liners are relatively inexpensive. So I, I, I think you can make a glove for $5 or so. here, my reinforcement. Yeah, and it's nice, you know, you can get together with your, your club and make gloves and that way you can have one person who can mix, mix and apply and help uh, other people make the gloves. That's what we usually do. You know, sit out in the parking lot if it's the summer so it doesn't stink up someplace and make some gloves after practice or what have you. Okay. So you just need to, uh, so this is already kind of at a, at a tacky stage, I'm just smoothing it out in between my my hand, my fingers there. So I'm going to put on the the extra reinforcing here with my hand in the, the functional position again. Um, yeah, I tend to find more than anything. I I I get it when I get. My hands get hurt. It's on the the front of my fingers, particularly my index finger and my small finger. So I just kind of put this on. If you if you work around with it too much, it tends to get uh, lots of spikes on it. So I, I like to avoid that. So I just kind of put it on, and then I'll actually smooth it out later. So I use the whole tube on this. Again, I, I've got fairly large hands, but I would I would expect a glove with this this sort of protection level to use, you know, between between a half and a whole tube of caulk. Okay, so there we have, it's all a, pretty much a big mess, but it's roughly where, where I want it to be. So what I'll do at this point is, is put some soap on the other hand, and this allows me to smooth out the, the caulk, um, push all those little points down. I can put it in, in between my fingers here so they won't stick together anymore. Now if you find you need to put more reinforcing on, after you, you have to let it dry and let the 
let the, the silicone dry all the way and uh, wash the soap off obviously because the, uh, the silicone won't stick to the, the soap. Anyway, so this, this kind of lets you smooth all this stuff down. You can move it around a little bit, you know, kind of like moving, moving toothpaste uh, in a toothpaste tube. The interesting thing too is that the, the soap is water-based. It actually seems to help the, the caulk set even faster once you do this. So now the, the whole surface pretty much uh, has soap on it and I'm just kind of pushing down the, the little spikes and what have you that seem to form whenever you mess around with, with silicone. Uh, you know, the nice thing about making your own gloves, I mean, that in addition to being, you know, not, not too difficult is they're exactly fitted to your hand. So they really uh, fit close and tight you can put the, the protection where you think you need it. Um, you know, again, keep, keep pushing the glove back on your wrist here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the last thing I like to do is to get that uh, jointed glove look is uh, just press some, some uh, slots in this caulk and it, it's really easy to do once you have uh, the, the soap on it. Um, so I just kind of kind of do that. You know, if it does, it actually really matter. Probably not, but personal preference, I suppose. Yeah, and it's usually at this point where you realize that you you don't have quite enough uh, on somewhere. And I can see, I think I want a little more on my thumb, so I'm going to have to put that on later at this point. Because it's got the soap on it. But uh, anyway, and the, the blue, the first layer here is, is set up fairly well. And the, uh, the copper color is, is starting, to, starting to set up. So I think I'll, I'll hold on to it here for another another few minutes just to let it harden up so you don't distort it when you're taking it off your hand. Another drawback of using the soap is if you happen to get soap, you know, underneath some caulk is it, it'll cause it to either flake off later or just not stick quite the way you would you would hope. But uh, anyway, yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, if you make a few of them, you get better at it. It's like anything else. You know, you do it a few times, and it gets easier, and you know where you want the protection and stuff like that.
Okay. So there, the glove, like I said, we'll give it, give it a couple more minutes here and then I'll take it off. The list of the, the, the only thing that's kind of hard to find is if you go on McMaster Car on the internet, if you just search for McMaster Car, the part number is L9, L9444941. And those are nylon inspection gloves. They come five to a pack. Uh, I think the shipping is about nine or ten bucks. They come very, very quickly, even if you just regular uh, UPS them. McMaster Car has this deal with UPS and they're just fabulous. But uh, anyway, the shipping is about 10 bucks. So you probably want to order more than one pack at a time. I also got these nitrile gloves from McMaster Car. They're not particularly cheap, cheap but they're uh, nitrile gloves, size XL. And nitriles are kind of nice just because they're less fragile than the uh, latex gloves. But uh, anyway clear silicone caulk. I like silicone one from GE. I get it from Home Depot. Paint any water-based poster paint, Walmart staples, you know, an office supply place, or acrylic, artist acrylic from a artist supply store. Or you can also use some water if you want. If you just put a few drops of water instead of the paint, that'll make it set up in you know, less than half an hour instead of overnight, which makes the whole process much, much more easy, much, much easier. Okay, so this is setting up pretty nicely here. So the last little trick is, is getting the glove off without wrecking it. Um, so what I like to do is blow in between the two gloves here. Yeah, so the, the blue is set up almost all the way. Uh, the copper color is still a little soft, but should be fine. So anyway. And if you kind of blow in between the two, it inflates the rubber glove up and it kind of loosens the whole thing. And you want to take it off fairly quickly and gently, but, but it's not easy. You know, you just try not to wreck the the shape of the glove and kind of put your hand down inside. You know, if the if one of the gloves sticks to the glove, that, that's no problem, just leave it there. And then again, I kind of arrange it in the position of function and leave it there to, to dry the rest of the way. You know, it'll probably take half an hour. Some some people have, some of my teammates have actually used the glove the same day. We, we had a little glove making party before practice and they made a glove, you know, an hour before practice and used it that day without wrecking it. I, I like to let them harden up overnight just because I think you're more likely to have it last a while. But uh, anyway, there you go. Enjoy.